There's not many genres in podcasting that are as captivating, pun intended, as true crime. This week's top 10 list does get a little bit dark and a little bit creepy. This week is the top 10 true crime cases of captivity. Welcome to another episode of The Twisted Ten. What up, guys? What up, what up? Hello, everybody. We're recording last day of February for this show. Uh, Go out out in about a week, but um, goddamn, we just stepped outside to watch a SpaceX launch, and it's, what, 80 degrees at night, mosquitoes are biting, hot as balls, humidity is like 90% fucking florida the rest of the country is still like digging their their cars out of seven feet of snow <laughs> yeah but, it's just the bugs yeah, yeah you, have, you have water on your property right um so technically on my property no uh but it's our neighbor's property has a pretty good sized pond right there yeah now now let me rephrase that after a lot of torrential rains, yeah, I have water on my property. Standing <laughs> water for weeks. In fact, we had a little gator. We had some turtles and ducks. And oh, for real? Fish. Yeah, gator? That's yeah, there's cool. a little gator in there. We've seen otters on our property, like a big fucking otter. Gigantic otter. I actually posted. Otter. Well, that's what I thought. Like, Were you a zoo? There's otters. In a, we bought the zoo. Is it um, Jumanji? <laughs> <laughs> you know, that movie, it still holds up. It is a fantastic Robin, Robin Williams, Williams movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, the new ones are phenomenal. They are fucking hilarious. So good. You're talking about the Rock and uh, Chris. Yeah. Uh, so Black and good. What's Chris, Chris, what's his name? Um, there's the Rock. It's Kevin Hart. Kevin Hart. Yeah, that's um, right. You try to think. You try to say Chris Tucker, didn't you? I did try to say that Chris isn't Tucker. Even yeah. Close. <laughs> well, they're <laughs> racist. They're but what? That has nothing to do with racism. <laughs> They both kind of have a, you know, small guy, kind of quick-witted, uh, punny. Yeah, all right, they're black, this, fine, whatever. The sketch comedy is kind of similar, though, you're right. It, it's very similar. I Chris watched, Tucker did, uh, what, all right, Chris Tucker's best performance. A Friday. Oh, all right, damn it, you know what, you're right. You know what, I'll give you that. His second best performance. Uh, the movie with Jackie Chan. Uh, nope. Uh, Don't ever touch a black man's radio. Yeah, no, not that one. Yeah. I know where you're going with that. Nope. Fifth What's Element. What's that movie called? Yeah. Oh, I, I've never even seen Super that. Green. I've never even seen Wait, that is that Chris Tucker? Oh, shit. I'd be really bad if that's not. <laughs> Maybe the, yeah, that's I'd Chris laugh if I'm that, pretty sure I, it is. I would laugh if that was Chris Rock. Let me, it's <laughs> it's definitely not Chris Rock. Oh, uh, so you've never seen The Fifth Element? No, I haven't. What? I admit that surprises me. Yeah, it surprises me too. I just for I keep forgetting about it. I don't I don't it's know. Like Margaret happened. hasn't seen it either. Wife hasn't I, seen need it either. To, I need to see it. I'm not like against seeing it. I just haven't gone to see it or gone to see it. I haven't just caught it yet for whatever reason. Yeah, he plays so it is it is definitely um it is definitely Chris Tucker, but he plays Ruby Rod and his character is fucking hilarious. It almost looks like he has a little like I don't I don't even know what you a Cubert head in his hair. He's got his hair styled like Cubert. Josh, do you even know who Cubert is? I do. All right, cool. Just making sure it's like a I've video game from our life. An original generation it, Cubert it like, Cubert arcade machine. It was almost like nice. Adam, it's almost like prior to our life. Like That's a Cuber. good point. It almost is. That's a good Cuber, point. Cubert was like 80. Well, they had Cubert on Atari, so Cubert was like right. 80, 81. Atari's actually 80, before 80, that. Yeah. Atari's like 76. Yeah, I don't, yeah I, I'm not sure, but I know. Um, this is the I top 10 Cuber video game consoles. Yeah, <laughs> no, kidding. That's a good conversation. That it actually is. wouldn't be a bad top 10 list. Like top 10. Most underrated old well no then that wouldn't be underrated. Atari was the shit. I don't know. I mean, I've got it I on how, how I've got it on my that. list of lists for video game, but I'd really love to find I mean there's so many people who podcast about video games. We gotta find somebody to I mean, come we're gonna in have, and guess how Casey like on the show. I'm That's sorry, true. our friend Casey who is a jer- she writes for IGN. And does their some of their vlogs, some of their YouTube yeah, channel stuff. Vlogs. She's she um, could come she's up on with something MVC. awesome on video games. She might. I don't know what she's gonna do her list on. She has agreed to come on the show while she's in town. So when is that going to be? Um, well, they live here now. They live. I, I, sh- I shouldn't say in town like they're they're on vacation. They're here. They left San Francisco because his family has property right here in Canaveral Groves. Cool. Oh, nice. Yeah, it's so right around the corner. Yeah, so they're just living out there. On, Man, on I really miss a lot. Of the city. I, I, so every once in a while, I'll check and. To reference this for the listeners, uh, Josh's group of friends, who I'm part of as well, has got 
they're a group called Team Teamwork. We've heard, heard hmm. you've heard us maybe reference the team in the past, and that's what we're, we're referring to. Uh, they use uh, a Telegram for you know chat conversations, topics, gaming, what, whatever the hell happens to come up. And uh, I'm in it, but every once in a while, I'll take like two or three days off and not keep up, and I'll go back, and there's like <laughs> 350 messages. I'm like, all right. To the bottom, to the bottom it goes. If somebody needed me, they would have tagged me. Otherwise, I'm not reading all this. It's yeah. just too much to keep up with. It, you, they talk a lot can, though, which it is can good. Be a lot of times, but for a lot of us, it is our social media. It's kind that's, of interesting. I was just gonna say that's kind of like your own little social yeah. media. It's our own little bubble. It's there's like 45 people in the largest of the chats, so it's a lot of people, but it's not like an unmanageable amount of people. But that's that's it. It's where we hang out. If I wasn't on Facebook in support of the show, I wouldn't be on Facebook. I just don't use it. I don't, I talk to you guys and Facebook. And I'm very happy to say is starting to be the unpopular choice for destinations for, uh, for podcasts, for social media groups, like uh, car club groups, things like that. You know, what's really starting to take over. You probably do. And we have it for the show. And what a great segue to a plug is Discord. Discord yeah. seems to be taking over everywhere. Speaking of that, where do our uh, where do our listeners go? By the way, Ron, Discord. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> twist the twisted no twisted ten dot com. I don't even know our own website. That's sad. <laughs> I'm in charge of editing the show. <laughs> Clearly, That's I'm fair. not in charge of the website. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, so Discord is a little bit of a chat room and a live stream platform. Well, it's a text and voice chat platform, but we use it to live stream the show on Sunday nights or on our off nights. But if you're in the Discord, we announce that. But twisted10.com, and there's a banner at the bottom that says join Discord, and that'll just invite you. It'll dump you right in. If you got to make an account, it'll walk you through everything. It'll just put you right into our general chat. And we don't gather any information there. You can come in anonymously, use That's a fake true. account. Yeah. You know, it doesn't, you don't have to install anything. It's all done in a web browser. However, if you do want to install it, there's a Discord app that you can download and install on your phone or your computer or whatever. But it's uh, it's cool. We go in there. We've got a couple little areas for our uh, for our listeners to hang out. We have a hosts only area where we kind of beat each other up in there. Um, but, uh, there's also a special council set up in discord for our Patreon members. And we want to show them a little bit of love right now. We want to say thank you to our Patreon subscribers. You guys help influence a lot of the shows that we do in the future. So, uh, patreon.com slash twisted 10 is the Patreon destination. If you are a Patreon member and in discord and we don't have you linked, let us know. Be sure to message me, Josh, Ron, somebody inside discord and say, Hey, how do I link my discord account? That way you get a special little, uh, emblem or something or color what do they get if their name is green which sounds really innocuous if you're not a part of the discord community yet but you'll be you'll stand out in in the audience there and there's a special room just for our patreon members so in case we happen to you know want to bounce ideas off you guys or want to coordinate for a twisted 10 show that you are going to recommend that we host we uh, we pay special attention 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 to our discord members that are patreon members also so not to say we don't pay attention to other discord members we do that too but uh but yeah check it out so that's an interesting little segue yeah, that, that was, was that was a good bad. one that, that was, was a, a good one we are drinking by the way this week again we did it last week and we had a good time i say last week just a couple of days ago on our bonus day but uh we we, we are we are kicking back on a little bit of Angel's Envy tonight in studio. So if you are a whiskey, scotch, bourbon type of fan, go check out Angel's Envy. It's a fantastic drink. They are not a sponsor. It just tastes really good. Um, Dan, uh, who hosted one of our Twisted 10 episodes a while back, introduced me to it. And I've kept it very stocked inside my liquor cabinet. So we are polishing that off tonight. We damn near polished off that Evan Williams last week. Yeah, we'll get we'll we'll finish it up. A little bit left on that. Yeah, yeah. It'll be it'll be good. I get to drink tonight because I hosted last week. Oh, that's right. Yep. Oh, I'm not supposed to drink. Oh, <laughs> damn it! I just spoiled it. <laughs> I, I am drinking, and yes, I am your host tonight for the Twisted Ten. Um. So, all right. Oh, I'm not. No, are you? Did you bring a list? No. I will count out. <laughs> I will count out to you in a heartbeat. I can Ron. just, I can just make one up as I go. Isn't that kind of? That's not our. That's platform. what I do. That's yeah. how a couple of our guest hosts in the past have done it, and that's okay if you have enough information in your noggin to be able to come up with top, a top ten of something. Go for it. Top ten mortgage loans. Yeah, like those flat earthers. They just made it up. 
Yes, exactly. <laughs> Ron's looking at his phone. That means he's not really paying attention to the show. I, you know how that works, don't you? Look, he put it. <laughs> I, I no, seriously. Like no one. Like ev- all of a sudden, everybody wants my attention all at once. It's like, come on, people. Everybody wants Ron. Yes. Um. All right. So. I was going to do a skit bit for this for, for tonight. So you you guys know in the past some you of like the episodes those. that I've done, I've had you guys drink the Kool-Aid. Um, what else have I had <laughs> literally. you guys do? Yeah, literally drinking the Kool-Aid. Yeah. Um, That's the one that stands out the most to me. Yeah, we'll use that as an example. I was going to do something like that tonight. I was actually going to have um, my son bring you down a uh, – he's going to be – he was going to be wearing a mask. He was embarrassed, so he didn't want to do it. He was going to be wearing a mask and he was going to bring you down, the two of you, something to consume and to drink. He was going to literally bring you water and bread. And then he was going to go back up and he was going to lock the damn door. So we, for our listeners, again, we are in a basement studio. So we are in Florida. Yes, nice. I know it's unusual, but we are in we are in a basement. The only thing missing from that whole thing is cheese. Cheese. Water, bread, and cheese. And then you get, keep us locked in the basement like Moog. <laughs> Just when you come down, you know, we're just like locked in the basement. You slide us some cheese and some bread and some water. Well, so that's then you lock the door back. It's kind of the idea. That's kind kind of the idea of having you guys completely trapped in the studio with no ability to get out of the studio throughout the entire episode. So I hope you guys already peed. So that was the idea behind tonight's skit bit because that ties into my twisted ten list tonight. So wait, do I need to go pee real quick? It's not going to be locked, so you're okay. <laughs> During the break, you'll actually get to go upstairs. Tonight's top 10 list is the top 10 true crime cases of captivity. Oh, cool. Oh, shit. Cool. <laughs> so our listeners, uh, some of these our listeners may have heard about in the past. There's been movies. There's been books. There's been these bother, biographies. These always bother me, man. Yeah, some of these are bizarre. Bothersome. I, I don't get too gruesome into some of the details. Um, I kind of focus in on length of time as the catalyst for what separates the, the list. All right, so one, you know, number 10 might be more shocking than number one. However, it's the length of time that the list has or that the, the, the captors had uh, I guess captives had to be locked away, and oh, I see. Okay, does that make sense? That makes sense. Explain so number, it very well. So, no, no. so, so number one is just they were they were prison the longest, the longest. Yeah. Cool. So oh, it's all about here. time. All right, you guys ready? Yeah, ready. Let's do it. All right, get off my old school paper here. All right, so we're going to start off with number ten again. If you guys have heard of these, then chime in. A couple of these have a little bit of a comical anecdote to them. Because the internet is the internet and has glamorized some parts of some of these stories. And that'll make sense as as we move through is the Is anybody list. like a sex slave? Um, yeah. Several of these. Uh, but not guy on guy. That's not hot. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's not hot to me. Sorry. There you go. For, Good anybody listening, <laughs> for anybody listening that that is hot to, then this might be your episode. Bigot. <laughs> is that uh, what that is? Let me, let me do. I think bigot, bigotry is, yeah, that covers it, doesn't it? Bigotry covers the prejudice against sexual preference, doesn't it? I mean, it covers a lot. Sure. I'm going to drink a little bit more. I think so. I think it does. I don't know. As as the fact that I'm not a bigot, I would know (laughs) the definition of one. Well, I'm not a millionaire, but I know what the definition of that is, too. (laughs) Chris Tucker. (laughs) (laughs) I'll get the fuck out of here. Number 10. <clears throat> All right, so number 10 is Elizabeth Smart. Yes. Time in captivity, nine plus months. June 5th, uh, June 5th, 2002 to March 12th, 2003. I don't have all the dates for all of these. I just have rough estimates. So I'm going to read a little bit about the stories. And by the way, the references for these are all over the place. Wikipedia, biography.com, uh, daily boxcar, boxcar.com, yeah. uh, Guinness World Book of Records, ironically. That's a really well. famous one or infamous one. Yeah. All right, so in Salt Lake City 2002, while she slept in the bedroom that she shared with her sister, 14-year-old Elizabeth Smart was kidnapped at knife point. She was dragged into the Utah woods and held prisoner by Brian David Mitchell, who referred to himself as Emmanuel, and his wife, Wanda Barzi. So this is a husband-wife duo that did this kidnapping. Mitchell starved the girl, force-fed her drugs and alcohol, raped her in a daily attempt to brainwash her into believing that he was a prophet. Mitchell and Barzi roamed Utah and California for almost nine months with Smart in tow before they were discovered and arrested. The key to breaking the case was Smart's sister. Terrified, 
she had uh she is that had, her name terrified to, uh, <laughs> <laughs> the way you said it her, her sister terrified <laughs> terrified she had stayed still during the kidnapping but she saw the man and recognized him as a former handyman hired by the smarts smarts are the people's name Ron yes I got, got that <laughs> police identified Mitchell and his uh, and his photograph was shown on TV shows the TV show America's Most Wanted. Less than a month later, Mitchell and Barzi were caught and Smart was returned to her family. Despite her heroin experience, Smart quickly picked up life where it had left off. She finished high school, attended Brigham Young University, and became noted advocate for kidnapping survivors. After helping to author the United States Department of Justice 2008 Handbook for Kidnapping Survivors, quote, You Are Not Alone, she launched her own foundation for victims and published a memoir, quote, My Story. The activist later introduced a podcast series and formed a smart defense initiative to empower women to fight back against the would-be attackers. So this particular story, while it did have some very gruesome parts to the story, I try my best not to get really graphic and really gory. Each one of these topics, and we've said this a thousand times, could have an entire two-hour podcast dedicated just to the stories that, themselves. That one probably does somewhere along the There's way. a movie for this one too. So yeah. some of these some of these have some really cool outcomes. Like in this case, yes, it was a horrible adventure. I venture is the wrong choice of words. It was a horrible nightmare that she was put through, um, but she is using that experience to benefit, you know, uh, educating other people on how to survive and how to the decisions that you make when you're in captivity and understanding how to deal with rape and and that kind of stuff. So yeah. she she does a really really good job. The guy job the that. guy who kidnapped her was a, a smart captor. Five seconds of silence gonna, and go. I'm just going to let that one burn. <laughs> just going to let it burn. Oh. Now, most of these are true. The silence was good because everyone else is laughing. So they didn't miss any of the is show. Did I miss the laugh That's track? That's what it was for. <laughs> <laughs> laugh track is that, button. Is that where that is? Oh, God, I didn't even get a grin on that one. <laughs> oh, Shit. it was brutal. <laughs> It was, Tough room. It Guys are brutal. painted on the seats Maybe. tonight. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Let me drink it. What's it like an NFL stadium? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, lately. Uh, ah, drink that bourbon, buddy. Is this uh, going to be like our thing now? Bourbon why, why with the show? Either bourbon whiskey or uh, scotch during the show. I like it. I like the theme. I like the motive. Let's change the logo. Fuck it. Let's just change the show to all about whiskeys. No. No. Oh. All right. Number nine. That wouldn't be very smart. <laughs> Oh, you Jesus. did it again. <laughs> now it's just funny uh, that the struggle that you're going through to yes. try to try to force that in there. It wasn't forced. It was funny. Well, all right. <laughs> um, number nine. So this one is a little bit different. This isn't necessarily a true crime, but it does fit the captivity. Oh, is scenario. there a twist on your list? Um, no, 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 no twist. Um, there are a couple of things later in the show. I might, you know, pull up uh, an internet clip or something like that. Kind of a bonus material at the end, kind of stuff. But no, there's no no twist tonight. Tonight's twist was going to be a skit bit, but I couldn't get my family to help me fucking do this tonight. So weeks, they, weeks off. You got yeah, a, I don't you know you got a would... son that ha- who is officially a celebrity on YouTube. And he won't put on a fucking mask and hand us bread water that's right <laughs> jesus he, he wouldn't do it is officially too good for us <laughs> yes, yeah yeah he's like, he wasn't embarrassed he was he, just like i'm totally, just gonna go make some money he guys. totally you know, big, you're, you're probably right <laughs> he totally big timed us didn't he he kind of did yeah, yeah damn. He's like, i'm not i'm not putting it it was an anonymous mask dude like the uh the guy harvey <laughs> anonymous yeah. mask guy fox oh that's what i meant to say guy harvey the guy harvey, <laughs> guy <mask>. harvey yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, not him. Not That's the fish awesome. shirt guy. Is that the fish uh, yes, shirt guy? Yeah, yes. Not the fish shirt guy. That's awesome. <laughs> All right, number nine. Number nine is Terry Anderson. So we jump from nine plus months in number 10 down to this this one, which is seven plus years. So oh, the rest of these, just do your imagination Are on how seven, far these- More than seven yeah, years. Yeah. yeah, so considerable, considerably more. Um, on March 16th, 1985, Anderson, again, Terry Anderson- had just finished a tennis game when he was abducted from the street from a yeah from the street in Beirut, uh, placed in a trunk of a car and taken to a secret location where he was imprisoned for the next six years and nine months. He was held captive, being moved periodically to new sites. His captors were a group of Hezbollah Shiite Muslims who were support supported by Iran in supposed retaliation for Israel's use of U.S. weapons and. Uh, and aid in the 1982-83 airstrikes against 
Muslim in Druze targets in Lebanon. So this is a political motivation. So this is really the only political motivation. I almost pulled into this list, Josh, as a bonus, the Tom Howes guys from Columbia. Columbia. Do you remember that? They were abducted by the FARC, the federal, no, whatever, the Colombian bad guys who do drugs. Yeah, I almost pulled his list in here, but I thought that having one non kind of true crime story in here is enough. But the story is, is, you know, quite, quite interesting. Um, there's also a kind of a theme that starts to set in with these stories a little bit. Um, do you guys know what, uh, what's the syndrome called? Give me one second. Ron, do some fancy Stockholm? editing here. Thank you. Yes. You know what Stockholm syndrome is? Obviously yes, you do. I've heard you of brought it. it up. Yeah. <laughs> yes. So that is going to play a key in a lot of these stories. Yeah. Um, a lot of the folks develop a Stockholm syndrome is for the listener. If you don't know, it's where you start the captor as, as a captive, you start to sympathize with your abductors and your, you know, your, your or, captors themselves. Yeah. yeah I'll, I'll give you a perfect, cause so many people have watched this show. Perfect example of Stockholm syndrome, uh, Theon Greyjoy reek when he's cap, you know, he's captured oh, yeah. by Ramsey, uh, Ramsey snow, Assumed to be Ramsey Bolton, right? Um, when his sister goes to rescue, for anybody who hadn't watched this, I mean, you've had years. Too bad. Uh, when his sister goes <laughs> to spoilers. rescue him and he won't even go with her. Like, he's just, no, yeah. I'm going to just stay in the dog crate, you know, here because that's where I belong because I'm Reek now. I'm this new you know, guy. That would be like really good Man, example of Stockholm that's Syndrome. That's like really extreme Stockholm Syndrome, though. Yeah. That's well, like brainwashing but, he they broke well, that's him. that is what stockholm syndrome is yeah. it is brainwashing it can be absolutely yeah in a lot of cases it is because you're it's oh. a defense mechanism really it, to be i mean to be honest like your brain has to go into that mode or you'll just probably not survive he was the longest held american hostage captured in an effort to drive u.s military forces from lebanon during the lebanese civil war since his release he was released Anderson has taught courses at Columbia Graduate School of Journalism and the E.W. Scripes or Scripps, I don't know how to pronounce it, School of Journalism at Ohio University. Uh, he was also on the talk show. He was uh, he has also been a talk show guest, a columnist, and a radio show host. He's written a best-selling memoir uh, of his experiences as a hostage titled, quote, Den of Lions. He filed suit against the Iranian government for his captivity and in 2002 was awarded a un- unpublished but multi-million dollar settlement from the frozen t- uh, Iranian asset assets estimated around $26 million. So, so through what um, system did he file suit against the Iranian government? It's a good question. There's some I was just really curious, international like, like they were like look at us. <laughs> Moving on, you know, but well, apparently it had to be. I mean, he got money, so yeah, yeah. No, there's, um, I, I, so this could be a situation where he filed suit in the U.S. and nobody from Iran showed up to defend their side, so they used some of those seized, le- those seized Iranian assets to okay. be able to award him. That makes sense. Yeah, so gotcha. that's a hey, he's got a, a decent payday. He never has to worry about money again in his life, and he's helping people through his <laughs> through his talks and everything else. All right, so we're moving on up. So another seven years. This is number eight. Stephen Stainer. This is out of California. That's my porn name. Stephen Stainer. <laughs> God, that's not, you're not even a grin. No, I got, it took me a second to figure it out. I'm like, because it's S T A Y N E R. Like stain. Oh, uh, stain. Like you stain. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You stain the yeah. sheets. Stain yes. Her. Stained her. Stained her. Wow. Stained your wife ah. white. Yeah. Man, I think, did you guys get together and decide <laughs> not to laugh at my hilarious jokes today before the show? Yes, I we feel totally, like that's what happened. We totally did I, that. I feel like that's what's going on here. Steven Stainer, a seven-year-old innocent boy, like your tie-in now, Ron? <laughs> not so much. Was, <laughs> was abducted with the help of Irv... <laughs> oh, oh, man. Man, I didn't know you could get that red. You're so red, our co- our listeners can see it. It's a combination of alcohol uh, and telling bad jokes about <laughs> seven year olds and porn star names. Oh, whoops! So he was a innocent seven year old boy abducted with the help of Irvine Edward Murphy in 1972. The Did real- he have a Murphy bed? Oh, the- throwback to the last week's show. Okay, go ahead. The real kidnapper <laughs> was Kenneth Parnell. who was a convicted child rapist. Yeah, this, it does get a little dark in some spots, guys. Sorry. After Murphy convinced Stephen to go with Parnell, he was taken into a cabin and unfortunately molested. 
Stephen was lied to and played the kidnapper, and he told him that his parents gave him up because they could not afford to pay for him anymore. So you're telling this to a seven-year-old kid. So think of a seven-year-old mentality being told that your parents can't afford to keep you anymore. So the kid went along. It's really kind of a sad story. Stephen was not the only one Parnell kept with himself as the offender was attracted towards little boys. When Stephen hit puberty, Parnell kidnapped another five-year-old boy named Timmy. Stephen took Timmy and ran away one day and hitchhiked their way towards home. So they, they escaped on their own. After returning to his family, Stainer had trouble adjusting. In an interview with Newsweek shortly after his escape, Stainer said, quote, I returned almost a grown man, and yet my parents saw me as, at, my first, at first as their seven-year-old boy. After they stopped trying to teach me the fundamentals all over again, it got better. But why doesn't my dad hug me anymore? Unquote. Sad fucking story. Um, Jesus. What yeah. a bummer. <laughs> Um, Stainer underwent brief counseling, but never sought additional treatment. He also refused to disclose all of the details of sexual abuse he endured from Parnell, 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 whatever. In 1985, Stainer married 17 year old Jody Edmondson, uh, with whom he had two children. He also worked with child abduction groups, spoke to children about personal safety and gave interviews about his kidnapping on September 16th, 1989 Stainer sustained a fatal head injury uh, on a, in a motorcycle accident. So he didn't take his own life. He just, he just ended up dying. Um, so this is an example of where it kind of went the opposite direction. This guy, while he did do some active, like he did speak and talk out about his captivity, he didn't give all the information about the captors or about his experiences because he was embarrassed. I mean, it was a very, very traumatic situation. And he was really young, trying to learn how to adjust to all that. So abduct abducted at seven and ran away at 14. So that whole time frame was... was some very <clears throat> developmental years, too. Yeah. It's pretty brutal. And what age did he die? Um, 1985, uh, no, sorry, 1989, um, I don't know, that's a good question, 1972, he was seven, so he was born in 60, what would that make it, 60, make it 21, six, would it be 21, I don't know, couldn't tell you. Damn. I'm not good at math, especially. Extra depressing. Thanks, yeah. thanks for that one. I told you a couple of these are going to have some sad, <laughs> some sad little twists. I mean, it has to do with abductions, of course, and, and, cap and people being held captive. I mean, how is it not going to be sad and dark? Yeah, this is a dark one. This is a dark theme show. In fact, we should change the logo colors to all dark. <laughs> Just all black. Just yeah, a black work. square. <laughs> yes. All right, number seven. This is eight years and five months. We're jumping the pond here. We're going to Austria. Come on. Uh, Austria. Well then, good day, mate. Let's, Let's throw, throw another, another shrimp, shrimp on, on the bobby. <laughs> Anybody out there get that reference? Throw it in I'm Discord. I'm sure most people got that reference. I think we we preach to a higher brow than ourselves, don't we? Don't we have some folks out there, they may not get that because it's too low brow for them. What was that from? Yeah. Exactly. See? <laughs> <laughs> dumb and dumb and dumb. Dumb and dumb. Oh, man. I haven't seen that movie in years. I've got that movie memorized. I watch it once a week in my mind. Just kidding. But I knew yeah. every line to that movie. <laughs> oh, I, I, knew, I could start at the beginning. I could say every single line throughout every the whole line. movie and end. I, I would know everything. Yeah. It was, it's good. The movie holds up. Uh, holds absolutely. Up pretty well. Absolutely. That's the sequ others? Sequels, not so much. The Younger and Dumber. Oh, whatever that God. Was. Yeah. Dumb and Dumber. Yeah. That was horrible. While the actor that portrayed Jim Carrey's character fucking nailed it. He nailed that, that character yeah, to that, a T. That, that script was, still bad. was hideous. Horrible. Really bad. This is the story of Natasha Kampusht. Kampusht? Kampusht. And again, all of these so far have had stories or movies made about them. So you might recognize some of these names. Again, this is eight years and five months. In 1998, Natasha was kidnapped when she was just 10 years old. Wolfgang Pick... Uh, Puck. Ooh. Wolfgang <laughs> Pricklop... Pricklapil. There we go. Pricklapil. <laughs> Pricklapil? Wolfgang Pricklapil, Made the man who me. kidnapped her, locked her inside a small cellar underneath his garage. Kind of like we're in right now. <laughs> I'm just kidding. The entrance was uh, concealed behind a cupboard. The cellar had only five meters squared or 54 square feet. So 15 feet by 15 feet. Think of it like that. Um, of space. It had a door made of concrete and was reinforced with steel. The room had no windows and was soundproof. So kind of an ideal studio. I mean, if you 
If you think, if you kind of think about it, right? <laughs> yeah, perfect. How do we test our soundproofing down here? Let's go kidnap somebody and lock them in, see if anybody can hear them. Is that how you did? All right, let's move on. Um, <laughs> really, you make fun of my jokes. <laughs> Josh laughed at mine. Oh, burn. Pricklapill did not it's even. Josh wants your dick. Uh, well, he's already had it, dude. Why would he want <laughs> again. it again? I mean, again. <laughs> Pricklapill did not even allow her to leave the basement for the first six months at all. She did not know whether it was day or night. No lights, no windows, no nothing. Well, lights, but no windows. In later in later years, she was seen outside in the garden alone, and Pricklapill's business partner had even said that Kampush seemed relaxed and happy. After her 18th birthday, remember she was kidnapped at 10. After her 18th birthday, she was allowed to leave the house with Pricklapill, but her kidnapper threatened to kill her if she made any noise. He later took her on a skiing trip to a resort near Vienna for a few hours. She initially denied that they had made the trip, but eventually admitted that that was true, although she said she had no chance of escape during that time. The abductor, and think about that for a minute. So think about traveling as a as a, an, a kidnapped 18-year-old. Think about that for a second. You have all the opportunities you would imagine in the world to pass a note or wave somebody down or get somebody's authority. You know they passed through security. You know they went through all of these checkpoints. How, I mean, I can't put myself in somebody's shoes like this, but how would you not try to, you know. Stockholm Syndrome. Yeah, this is that's kind of where this is going. <laughs> that's exactly why. The abductor had obsessive compulsive disorder. He would force her to do her chores and beat her whenever she left a fingerprint on any surface. Natasha was able to escape after eight years when she was allowed to vacuum Pricklapil's car. She ran away till she was far, far away from him. Natasha was inconsolable when she got to know that Pricklapil committed suicide by jumping in front of a train. So, hey, one for the home team there. <laughs> At least he's not on this earth anymore. She suffered from a serious case of Stockholm Syndrome. Absolutely. So she was she enjoyed her time working in the garden and and doing, you know, odds and ends for for Pricklapill. Also, movie about her out there now. Huh. And I'm skipping some of the most intense details of these stories, like going into depth of describing the living situation for the girls or for the boys or for whatever in these situations, but Use your imagination. As bad of a story as some of these can be, uh, that's what they are. That's yeah. that's where they get yeah, to. I mean, that's she lived in a room this big for six months. Yep, and it's so dark that she couldn't tell it was day or night. That's nuts. Number six. This is over nine years. We're going to the little island. I guess it's not so little of Japan. Oh God, here we go. Some Japanese names. <laughs> Fusako Seno. I guess that's not too hard. Fusako Seno was just nine years old when she was kidnapped in the year of 1990. Oh, Nobi, mm, Nobuyuki Sato, a 28-year-old mentally disturbed Japanese man, had kidnapped her and kept her with her over nine and kept with her over nine years. Nobuyuki held Fusako. <laughs> God damn it, this is going to be hard to do. In a room in his apartment where he used to live with his elderly mother. He lived feet away from the police station st and was still able to keep her in captivity for nine years. So right next door is where he lived to a full police station. The strangest thing about Fusako's kidnapping is that she never tried to escape, probably because she was scared of endless threatening she had got from Nobuyuki. He used to electrocute her with a stun gun as well. I laugh at that. It's kind of an uncomfortable <laughs> laugh, but it's very awkward. Nobuyaki, Nobu, Nobuyaki's mother, after nine years span, complained to the police authorities when she experienced an aggressive behavior. Fusako was finally free and Nobuyaki was sentenced to 14 years. Fusako was so traumatized that she never recovered and has the mind of a child. So she's been seriously mentally and how, how long this. ago was I mean not long ago how many years was she captured just over nine years Jesus right next to a police station by a guy who was mentally disturbed of course I guess you can say anyone who's going to kidnap and imprison somebody meets the criteria of mentally disturbed or mentally handicapped at some level their wiring ain't straight however this guy had already been registered as mentally you know had mental problems and he was holding her in a room in a house with his mother Think about that for a second. She finally, the mother finally complained and said, they're getting too noisy over there. There's something's going on. And then the cops show up and figure out what the hell's going on. 
Yeah. What a that one's bizarre. What a weird day at work. What do you mean? Is the cop? Went in for a noise complaint, saved a child's life. Yeah, she's been in there for nine years. Yeah, Man. that's that's uh at the time she would have been eighteen when when they rescued her. So yeah, that's ten through six. So it's kind of scratching the surface of some traumatic syndromes or traumatic events that are happening to these kids, but also painting the picture of <laughs> Stockholm syndrome is taking effect on a few of these people. And, you know, it's showing its toll. It's showing its the compassion that some of these people have for their captors is really kind of bothersome. It, it, it's I don't, I don't know how to it's it fascinates the hell out of me to hear the stories about some of these people coming out of these situations just because of what they try to rationalize, yeah. you know, initially, of course, it's a shock, but after all the raping is done for years and years and years, and that's no longer as shocking as it was as bad as that is to say, as shocking as it was from the beginning, they start to rationalize and sympathize with their captors saying, well, he, you know, he, he really does love me. He's only doing this because, you know, he needs a different outlet and I'm his outlet or, you know, whatever, whatever the case is. But man, um, if you are, captive and your captor is letting you listen to podcasts go get help <laughs> join our discord server <laughs> <laughs> become a patron today <laughs> i'm such an asshole <laughs> <laughs> I do. uh, well, that, that's smart though ron because they can use the credit card if of you their only captor. get five dollars a month you should become a patron and spend <laughs> oh that's brutal I'm so bad Man, I'm trying to lighten up this. Man, uh, this yeah, topic it's, here. it's dark. It's, I'm it's, sorry. It is morbidly fascinating, but man, it is. It's definitely a very somber topic. Naturally, it is. It is. And there, here's a little bit of a twist. One of these future ones in the, in the second half of the show has three people included in it. I know, not really a big spoiler, but there you go. <laughs> All right, we're going to take a break in studio. You'll You're, never guess we're, <laughs> what happens next. <laughs> we're going to try to bring you up, beat a little bit, uh, put a smile back on your face, put some optimism back in your heart. Here's a little bit of True Phonic. Enjoy the break. We'll be right back. I got to split quick somehow Because you got me in deep I'm too deep right now Soon I'm feeling restless when most of our time, our time is spent around my mattress. Salt strap, baby, tell me what's left. And now I can't believe this how it's gotta be. Oh, you make me feel away, but I still gotta leave. I gotta be free. Yeah. I 
just can't give you everything And welcome back to one of the darkest shows of the Twisted Ten that yeah. I think we might have ever done. Oh, it's yes, dark, this is, but it's good. It's a dark theme show. All right, so welcome back. This is the t- top ten true crime cases of captivity. It's a lot of C's. I'm surprised I made it through that without stuttering. Um, just to recap, number ten was Eliz- Elizabeth. <laughs> now I do it. <laughs> no, it's Elizabeth. God damn, Angel's Envy. Uh, number ten was Elizabeth Smart, nine months. Number nine was Terry Anderson, kind of the non- True crime story, more of a political style story. He was there for seven years. I ran, right? Yeah. Number eight is uh, Stephen Stainer, seven years. Number seven was Natasha Kampusch of Austria, eight years and five months. And number six was Fusako Sano, the the woman girl that was held in <laughs> right beside the police station in Japan. So that brings us to number five. Number five. This one I promise you, you've heard of one way or another. This is the story of Amanda Berry, Gina De Jesus, and Michelle Knight. This is from Cleveland. This story, uh, this captivity was over 10 years and nine months. The Ariel Castro kidnappings took place between 2002 and 2004 when Ariel Castro kidnapped Michelle Knight, Amanda Berry, and Georgina or Gina De Jesus and held them captive in his home in the Tremont neighborhood of Cleveland, Ohio, in the United States. Ariel Castro kidnapped three girls and kept them with him over a decade. Michelle, 21, was the first one. After her, Ariel kidnapped Amanda. She was only 16. And a year later, he abducted Gina, who was 14. Michelle was kidnapped and chained for as long as she can remember. Ariel Castro raped her and violently impregnated her five times in a span of 10 years. He did not let her keep the baby by forced miscarriages because he stopped feeding her and beat her until she was black and blue. So he literally caused the abortions from abuse. Sorry. Good. We're going dark. After Amanda (laughs) Berry was kidnapped, he claimed both of the girls uh, sorry, he chained both of the girls together and impregnated her as well. Amanda even gave birth during her exile. Think about that for a minute. Stuck in somebody's captivity room, and that's where you give birth. Freaking, I don't even have words. Castro used to keep the girls chained, but with time, he loosened up a bit. He had bolted the front doors so that the girls could not escape. After, sorry, in April 2013, Amanda Berry noticed that Castro had left the inner door open by mistake. Amanda saw that and called out to a neighbor. She was able to break out of the door, break out of a little cellar or whatever the hell the room was that they were they were captive in and was able to r- reach a neighbor through a door or through something. I don't, I don't remember what it was. She ran out with her six-year-old daughter and called 911 with the help of a neighbor. She said, help me, quote, help me. I'm Amanda Berry. I was kidnapped and I've been missing for 10 years and I'm here. I'm free now. On May 8th, 2013, Castro was charged with four counts of kidnapping and three counts of rape. He pleaded guilty to 937 criminal counts of rape, kidnapping, and aggravated murder as part of a plea bargain. Doesn't really sound like much of a plea bargain. 937 counts of rape. What was that down from? Just think about that. That's 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 the the, plea bargain. That's the plea bargain. Um, He was sentenced to life plus... How many years do you think they gave him on top of life? 372. I say it's probably pretty big because life is only like 25 years, right? Isn't that what a life sentence is? I thought a life sentence was until you die, but I mean, I, I might be wrong. I don't, I don't know the answer to that. Know. I'm going to look that up out of curiosity. I don't it know. It didn't matter because I the, fucked on hundreds. the additional years that the judge threw at him, I laugh because fuck that guy. Um, he was sentenced to life plus a thousand years plus a thousand. <laughs> in always, prison without the possibility of parole. I always what? envision this, this prison where prisoners go who are serving um, sentences that are life plus. It's just like skeletons like. <laughs> chained up on the wall. Yep, that guy has 95 more years before we take his bones, bury him. 
Um, good news. Hey, there's there's positive news on this. On September 3rd of 2013, one month into a sentence, so only a month in, Castro died by suicide after hang by Clinton um, after hanging himself by his by bed what? sheets in prison. You heard me. <laughs> I did hear you. <laughs> By Clinton. Wow. You... <laughs> he Clinton himself. Uh, um, wow. All right. Man. So here's here's the only real twist kind of on this story. The, the person that heard her, his name is Charles Ramsey. Charles Ramsey was the man who heard the screaming and he escalated the situation to the police. The situation. I did say that kind of drunk, didn't I? <laughs> situation. situation. It's like saying uh, judicial. E- even sober, that sounds like you're drunk when you say it. Um this guy, Charles Ramsey, is infamous. God, it's hard to say. God damn it. <laughs> now you got me thinking about it. He is infamous with the internet memeification with the interview quote of, quote, I barbecue with this dude, unquote. And another quote is, I knew something was wrong when a little pretty white girl ran into a black man's arms. And last one, dead giveaway. Do you recognize any of those quotes? I do. I've, I've heard the second quote nope. before. Ron, pull, first up your, one I didn't. pull up your phone. I want you to do a YouTube search for uh, dead giveaway and see see what you can find. Hold on. I got to. You'll gotta, recognize it when I you gotta hear I got to clear it. the porn first. Hold so, on. So, <laughs> so, does that, so what am I What am I looking for? Just do a, a YouTube search for dead giveaway. Oh, let me go to the app. Or dead giveaway song or something like that. Okay. Um, okay. So I looked this. it up. A life sentence is uh, 15 years. In most of the United States. That is it? Yep. So it's a life sentence. It's 15 years plus parole. So you spend 15 years in prison. And then if you are deemed not a danger to your community, then you can go out on parole and you spend the rest of your life on parole. So you are never free from the system as a whole, though you may not spend it in prison. So you can get more than one life sentence at a time. So if you get five life sentence, that's 75 years plus parole. Damn. Damn. So yeah, it, it was weird. I, it's, it's, I guess it makes sense though. Cause I mean, not everybody, I mean, after 15 years in prison, hopefully you've just changed and you're no longer violent or our system is inherently broken, right? I, God, I really guess I thought that a life sentence meant that you stayed there until you died. I, I, I guess assumptions don't work in those situations. The legal system is, that's a pretty interesting. Weird, 15 right? years. Yeah. All right. Did you find the dead giveaway quote uh, or the I song? Found the or song. You want me to hit? Yeah, play? yeah, yeah. Right. Play it. See if you recognize it. Charles Ramsey, he's a neighbor. Uh, t- walk me through again what happened this afternoon. I knew something was wrong when a little pretty white girl ran into a black man's arm. Do you recognize Dead this? Giveaway. Dead giveaway. My neighbor got big testicles because we see this dude every day. <laughs> we eat ribs with this dude, but we didn't have a clue that that girl was in that house. She said, please help me get out. So that meme right there, that song became internet famous. How many millions of views does that video have on it? Let me see. Watch Ooh. this one be a bad one. I only have like 3,000 views, Adam. Uh, yeah, this one's got 752,000 views. Yeah. From, yeah. <laughs> there, no, are, there, there are videos of that. That guy became internet famous because of his <laughs> his funny lines during the, quote, during the interview that he did with a local news company. But uh, people remixed his voice and did all sorts of stuff. Anyway, he was a guy who ended up calling the cops and bringing the law down onto this guy's house. And as he was saying in the the interview, everybody in the neighborhood knew this guy. Everybody trusted him. They ate food with him. You know, they barbecued with him. So I ate ribs with this dude. We ate ribs with this dude. Anyway, I figured you guys would remember that. I know Josh, you know, said he did, but no, surprised you didn't, Ron. No, I'd never heard of it. Interesting. Spend more time looking at the internet and less time in real life, and you'll start getting these jokes. Yeah, because, yeah, I'd, I'm trying to, like, break that addiction of not being on the internet. <laughs> Thank you very much. All right, so we're going to take it overseas again, number four. Um, I know I said this was the only one earlier for this kind of situation, but I lied. I've got you another lied, one in clearly. Here. Yeah, I did. I Honestly, it was two <laughs> weeks ago when I wrote the list. I forgot. I forgot I had another one in there. Um, so this is Robert Levinson. He was imprisoned, or not imprisoned. He was in captivity for over 13 years. Former Drug Enforcement Administration, DEA, and Federal Bureau of Investigation, FBI, agent, so he's done both, Robert Levinson was abducted on the Iranian island of Kish on 9 March 2007. Although Levinson uh, claimed to be working in Iran as a private investigator, 
tracking cigarette smugglers for the tobacco industry, evidence has since emerged that his employer was in fact the CIA. So we've got DEA, FBI, and CIA all wrapped into this guy's story at some point or another. So he's had multiple different jobs working in these places. Man. So yeah, kind of a what kind a of a dude. What do you call that? A uh, a roulette game of which three letter agency do you work for? Kind of guy. Um, he had subsequently been captured. Uh, by the Iranian intelligence service in late 2010, Levinson's families received photographs showing him with long hair and a beard wearing an orange boiler suit. Never a good sign in a video (laughs) when you, you, your, your family member is in one of those red suits from a terrorist group, uh, proof that he had been alive for some years after his disappearance on March, excuse me, in March, 2015, the U S government offered a reward of 5 million U S dollars for information leading to his safe return. In March 2020, it was reported that Levin's, to Levinson's family and the United States government had concluded it was likely that Levinson had died in Iranian custody before 2020. On October 5th of 2020, U.S. court ordered the government of Iran to pay more than $1.4 billion U.S. in punitive and compensatory compensatory damages to Levinson's family. So this guy was held for 13 years and then finally the U.S. just said, at this point, it's likely that he's dead. So they they ordered him. Now, that's the interesting story. This one's kind of a case un, unresolved. He may still be alive, but the U.S. has written him off at this point. They've said, nope, he is most likely dead at this point. We have no proof of life. We have no communication on his whereabouts, uh, nothing. So this guy could still be in captivity in an Iranian cell or or cellar or basement or who the who the hell knows but odds are probably not anymore man so that's kind of almost like an indefinite uh are the rest of them going to be like that like they didn't get out no no they no they didn't no. make it oh okay no the in fact the next 3 so that was 4 so 3 2 and 1 I'm pretty sure all have had movies written and and done about so, them some of them incredibly yep that one um, yeah, all three of these have they, they have conclusions to all three of the next ones. There, there was a mo- there was a book written called, and I think they did a movie too called The Room. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's a f- fantastic one. Was that the one about the um, the one that had the, the kid? dead giveaway? No. Was that the dead giveaway one? I wasn't sure. N- no. As you were describing, it, I thought maybe it was. I didn't read that book or see the movie. So the movie was sure. fantastic. Um, what you're referring to is I, I don't know the the name of the I, the person. I'm not even sure if the room was was. Fiction or I never saw real. It. Like I, I'm not, actually not even sure about. No, that. it's ba- that was based to on a true honest. story. That was 100 percent based okay. on a true story. All so right. it's, it's basically where uh, a woman was kidnapped, and I might that might that's not that one. Let's see if it's this one. No, definitely not that one. God, these these next couple of ones are oh, just going to come up. We don't crazy. It's not. It's not in this one. Um, the room was an interesting story. I like the segue there, Ron. The room was an interesting story because the. The woman, and maybe you can look up to see who it actually was while we're talking about it a little bit. The the woman who was kidnapped was raped in her, by her kidnapper and had a child and began to raise the child inside this room. The only room that they were allowed to ever be in. And eventually, the woman found a way to get her son at least out. By faking his death, rolling him up in a carpet, telling him how to breathe properly so it looked like he was actually dead and got him out and got him on a truck and and, and whatever. And the really sad part about the story is after it was all said and done, the kid wanted to go back to that location because that's all that that kid has ever known. He He missed that environment. It was a culture shock to come out of this cellar that he spent 10 years of his life being raised in and going out into the real world. But yeah, that's a it's a fantastic book and it's an amazing movie. I was trying to look Man. and see what the name of the real I don't know. It, you, it wasn't real easy to find. I didn't really see who, who You said something was. in there though that I have a question about. Something that Was it was it when I slurred a couple of my words from this uh <laughs> Angel's you, Envy? <laughs> you just said that there are cigarette smugglers in the world. Mm-mm. Did I miss that? was Levinson's cover. So that's what he was trying to say is that he was working for, let me go back. He was working for the, that was his, what he said apparently is that he was a private investigator tracking cigarette smugglers for the tobacco industry. Yeah, but that was his cover. So it has some basis in reality, right? I guess that's a good point. 
What the? What have I been missing out? I can buy cigarettes at the gas station. Where do I go to turn a profit? Yeah, but you're not in Iran. This, where do I go? Where do I ship them to? If oh, I can make money just on prison. forwarding <laughs> cartons of, <laughs> carton of cigarettes. It's a prison, man. Just, oh. head, head on over to Sharps. Just a missed opportunity here. That's all. I'm just... Number three. I'm sorry. Number three is J.C. Duggard. She was held in captivity for 18 years. In 1991, J.C. Duggar, only 11 years old, and that's D-U-G-A-R-D, because there's also a show yeah, with the Duggards. The, the people it's who not the same. like yeah. to have lots of kids. And, yeah, a yeah. little different. <laughs> um, but Duggard is D-U-G-A-R-D in this case. I think Duggards, the Duggards is two Gs, I believe. I have anyway, no idea. In 1991, J.C. Duggard, only 11 years old, was kidnapped outside her home in South Lake Tahoe, California. Her stepfather witnessed her abduction and immediately contacted the authorities, but J.C. could not be located. She had been transported almost 200 miles away to the town of Antioch, where she was held prisoner by a convicted rapist named Philip Garrido and his wife, Nancy. For the next 18 years, Duggard would be their prisoner and would end up bearing two children by Garrido. Like Mitchell... Garrido felt he had the religious justification for his actions. Mitchell earlier in our stories, the quote, the creator has given me the ability to speak in the tongue of angels in order to provide a wake up call that will in time include the salvation of the whole world. Unquote. This is this guy's crazy ass words while disturbing Sorry. While distributing flyers related to his new church, God's Desire, on the University of California campus in Berkeley, campus police asked him to register here uh, his organization. So these are the campus police here. So these guys are like, oh yeah, this guy's kind of kind of wackadoo. Let's let's get him to put his name down on paper somewhere. They soon discovered Garrido's criminal record, which led them to JC's rescue. So this guy's proselytization. You like the word? Big Not going to challenge it? No. Nope. He's trying to push his uh, his religious beliefs onto this uh, school, led these campus police to say, okay, why don't you come at least register? We'll let you do it, but you need to register if you're going to be you know, proselytizing on our campus. So he went in and did it. And ironically, they did a background search on his name and found out that this guy is, has been a convicted you know, bad guy in the past. And that eventually led to J.C.'s rescue. Duggard would reunite with her family in an attempt to reclaim her life, establishing the J.A.Y.C., J.C., foundation to help trauma victims. In 2011, she published the memoir, A Stolen Life, a wrenching account of her years in captivity, and follow, uh, followed in 2016 with Freedom, My Book of Firsts. On August 24, 2009, Garrido, the, the guy who did the kidnapping, visited the San Francisco office of the Federal Bureau of Investigation and left a four-page essay containing his ideas about religion and sexuality, suggesting that he had discovered a solution to problem behaviors like his past crimes. So this is prior to him getting arrested. So before that happened, this, this came up. A little bit out of order, but it's a good part of the story. The essay described how he had cured his criminal sexual behaviors and how the information could be used to assist in curing other sexual predators by, quote, controlling human impulses that drive humans to commit dysfunctional acts, unquote. On the same day, he went to the University of California police uh, with Duggard's two daughters seeking permission to hold a special event on campus as part of, quote, God's desire program. Now, I want you to understand what I just said there. He went to a police station asking to hold a speech with the children that he had from his kidnapped woman that he had been holding. So he took his two, I don't know if they're bastard children, I don't know what you would call them, but he took those two kids with him to go do this speech. He spoke with special events manager Lisa Campbell. She perceived his behavior as erratic and felt that the girls were sullen and submissive. She asked Garrido to make an appointment for the next day, which he did, leaving his name in the process. Officer Ali Jacobs ran a background check and discovered that Garrido was a registered sex offender on federal parole for kidnapping and rape. Now, I didn't write this part down, but the interesting part about that is when they brought him in to do his interview, he brought his kids in too, and they separated them saying, you know, let's just go let them wait out in the waiting room. At which point other investigators talked to the kids to figure out what the hell was going on. And yeah. they could tell that they were a little mental. Something wasn't yeah. right. 
you know, where there's smoke, there's usually a fire. In this case, it was a giant fucking fire. So that whole process led to freeing of JC and her children. And then, uh, you know, that's how the story goes. That's nuts. Yeah. It's fucking insane. And where was that again? Tennessee? California. Oh, Cal- oh um, you said Antioch. I thought maybe Antioch, Tennessee, Antioch, California. Uh, it originally happened in South Lake Tahoe. That's where the kidnapping was. And then he went 200 miles away to Antioch, California. Okay, gotcha. I, it's at least, is that how you pronounce it? A-N-T-I-O-C-H. I think yeah, that's Antioch. Yeah, that's exactly okay. how you pronounce it. All right, yeah. I don't know. I know South Lake Tahoe, but I don't know what Antioch, California is. But yeah, so interesting. Another story of birthing children while in captivity it's just fucking crazy yeah incredibly crazy she was held for 18 years add another four years to that and you get to number two five years five years <laughs> add another five years adam's not good at math add another five years that is number two <laughs> number two is elizabeth fritzel again another one that there's been movies and tons of documentaries done on she was held captive for 20 th- over 23 years Sexually abused by her father, Joseph, from the age of 11, Fritzel was lured into a specially prepared cellar in her house in, oh God, you guys, this is another Austria one, Amstatin, Austria. Good day, mate. <laughs> Not a good day, mate. At the age of 18. Joseph locked her in the cellar and held, held her captive, telling police that his daughter had run away from home to join a cult. For the next 24 years, Joseph, this is her, this is her dad. Jo- her, her biological father, Joseph physically assaulted Fritzel and preg- impregnated her not once, not twice like the other person, but eight times. Three of the children were raised, quote, upstairs, while the other three stayed downstairs with Fritzel in the cellar. By the way, two of the other children died. So out of the eight, two of the kids died because, I mean, let's face it, you're not in the best of situations. On April 19th, 2008, when one of the downstairs children underwent kidney failure, Joseph was forced to seek medical attention. Fritzel was allowed out of the cellar. At the hospital, authorities began to question Joseph's information. Eleven days later, Fritzel told her full story to the police, and her father was arrested and imprisoned. He was sentenced to life in 2009. Fritzel took on a new identity in an undisclosed location in Austria known as Village X. She has reportedly adjusted to life above ground, bringing her upstairs and downstairs children into one family and finding love with a security guard that was assigned to protect her. So that story kind of wraps it up into a nicer little nutshell at the end. You have one big happy family. That was 23 years. She was, yep. 23 years, eight children were done. And these are eight children by her father. These are her father impregnating her with eight different children throughout this whole time. Yeah, this guy was old when he was put into prison, too. He was like 70 or 80 years old when he was finally put into prison. So yeah, a life sentence for him would have been a life sentence. Yeah, he got to live almost his entire life free. It's bullshit. Yeah, yeah. Man, so 2009, you said that she yep. found her freedom, which means 23 years. What a fucking shock. Yeah, that was 28 August 1984 through 26 April 2008 was the captivity time. Well, 2009 is when she officially, you know, moved on with her life. But uh, 2000, the 26 April time frame was when they had to take the, the kid to, for kidney failure to the to the doctor. One of the downstairs children who'd never downstairs been registered or, or whatever. I wonder if he claimed him on his taxes. It's a bad question to ask. That is. I just, the shock that, I mean, just the culture shock on top of just everything. Like she'd lived in a box for yep. all them years to just, here's the internet. What yeah. a... That's uh, everything. I mean, imagine imagine being, well, I cannot. Um, everything I can't would be imagine. different. The internet, cars, clothing, styles, TV, uh, yeah, everything. Ev- everything. I mean, news. The oh. the Austria doesn't isn't as. I mean, of course, they are awestruck by what happened in nine eleven, but that you had to learn about. You know, politics, just the world at large. You have no idea about what's going on for your entire time during captivity, <sighs> for twenty three years. What a, I mean, if it wasn't awful enough, then just to come out and be so disconnected from what world, what life is at that point. All right. So this next one's a doozy. <laughs> this one made number one for, for a very, very important, well, not important, but very interesting reason. The Elizabeth Fritzl story kind of tied for, for number one, just because of 
how just outlandishly crazy that was because it was your own family members that were doing that to you. But let's go to number one. Again, movies were made about these people, this particular family. Books have been written. Biography, biographies have been written. You can hear interviews with these people. It's just, it's just amazing. This is the Turpin family. Captivity time, more than 25 years. The Turpin family came to the attention of the police and public in 2018, so pretty damn recently, four years ago, well, three and a half years ago, as a severe case of child maltreatment. On January 14th, a Turpin child escaped from the home of David and Louise Turpin in Paris, California, that's P-E-R-R-I-S, California, and contacted police who then raided the house and found disturbing evidence of prolonged abuse and torturous living conditions. Given the number of dependents involved, 13 siblings, the degree of abuse and the protracted nature occurring over the decades, the story garnered significant national and international interest in the press. David Allen Turpin, born in 1961, and Louise Anna Turpin, born in 1968, married in 1985 in Parisburg, Virginia, when David was 23 and Louise was only 16. Now, different time. That was okay back then. That wasn't as, as taboo of a, of a marriage as it is these days. The couple are adherents to the quiver, mm, quiverful movement of uh, and Pentecostalism. According to David's parents, the couple kept having children because, quote, God called on them to do so. From 1988 to 2015, they had 10 daughters and three sons. All of their children's names begin with the letter J. In 1999, the Turpins left Fort Worth, Texas for Rico Vista. I don't know. Maybe that's also in Texas where uh, then left the area in 2010. After the family left, neighbors found feces and beds with ropes tied to them in the house, along with dead cats and piles of garbage around the property. So not exactly your prime renters, I would, I would say. Yeah. By 2018, the Turpin children had been planning to escape their parents for more than two years. On January 14th, 2018, two of the girls left the house through a window. The younger girl, 13 years old, became frightened and turned back, but the 17-year-old got some distance away and called 911 on a cell phone uh, she had bought with her, uh, she had brought with her. I wonder where she got the cell phone from. I didn't say that in the story. When police officials met with her, she showed them photos and the conditions inside the house. Deputies of the Riverside County Sheriff's Department raided the house, inside which they found the other 12 children. One was shackled to a bed, and it appeared that two others had been shackled until just before the officers arrived. Like, quickly un <laughs> unshackle the kids. The cops are here. It's kind of an interesting thing you don't think you would ever say. The children were so malnourished that deputies thought they were all under 18 when, in fact, seven were over 18. So you walk into a house and you think there's a bunch of minors in there. Seven of the kids were over 18 just because they were so malnourished, you couldn't tell how old they were. The sheriff's department said that Louise was perplexed as to why they were at her residence. The house contained hundreds of journals written by the children about their lives. All of the children spent several weeks in hospitals after which the six minors were put into foster homes in the early 2020, sorry, in early 2020, the Riverside County deputy district attorney said that some of the children are living independently, living in their own apartment and have jobs and are going to school. Some volunteer in the community. They go to church. One had already graduated from college. So the Turpins were charged with 12 counts of torture, 12 counts of false imprisonment, seven counts of abuse and def, uh, dependent of a dependent adult and six counts of child abuse, uh, child abuse. Damn it. Scotch <laughs> child abuse, child abuse. <laughs> David received an additional charge of lewd, uh, of a lewd act on a child under 14. They were held in lieu of nine to $12 million bail David was eventually charged with perjury in relation to affidavits he filed with the California Department of Education over the years, in which he asserted that his children were being educated in a private school. So he was saying they were being educated in a private school when, in fact, they were just being chained to their beds. Mm. On February 22nd, 2019, David and Louise were charged. Uh, sorry, let me start that section over, Ron. Sorry. 
On February 22nd, 2019, David and Louise each changed their non-guilty pleas to guilty to one count of torture, three counts of willful child cruelty, four counts of false imprisonment, and six counts of cruelty to an adult dependent. Both were sentenced to life imprisonment with the possibility of parole after 25 years. Experts believe they will never receive parole due to the severity of the crime, making it effectively a true life sentence. I think that's all that I've got on that. Oh, no, bonus. Oh, yeah, that's just some extra bonus material that I'll read here in just a second. (laughs) So this one isn't so much about the sexual nature of imprisonment. Even though there was one count that they were charged with with uh, lewd acts on a child under 14, that one was more of control, perhaps, maybe more of just cruelty, just being dicks. That's better? Yeah, it's not. It's not. Well, maybe. I don't know. Maybe in a way, it's it's not as I mean, damaging. Malnourished, chaining them up, torturing them, I, yeah, using I guess, them. I guess it. No, nah, no, still rape just is as horrible. Yeah, yeah, it's bad. It's it's all it's all, it's all very very bad in these situations. But um, but yeah, that one has the most attention because of the amount of kids that were involved, the yeah. length of time over twenty five years that these kids were imprisoned. Um, and just the, the absolute pieces of shit that those, those two were, I mean, it's just, there's I'd, no, I'd heard that story before. That was the one, one of the ones that you heard, huh? No, I definitely heard that one. In fact, I think, you know, sometimes, uh, law and order SVU will grab real headlines and kind of twist them around to make their shows. Pretty sure they did an episode on that one. Oh, I wouldn't, I wouldn't doubt yeah, that. I'd be sure surprised if they didn't do versions of this. I know some show did. I think it was Law & Order SVU did that. Law & Order is a great show. In fact, we have a Twisted 10 about Law & Order hosted by Carrie McGinnis from, oh, she's going to kill me. I don't remember the names of the shows that she's hosted in the past. Anyway, she, go back and check it out. There's a top 10 celebrities you wouldn't think were on Law & Order. Law & Order, yeah. <laughs> There's a new Law & Order coming out, um, I think in April, uh, Law & Order Organized Crime. So how do you think it's going to go? Like, they're going to get a lead? It's going to go like this. a plot <laughs> twist. <laughs> <laughs> doink, doink. <laughs> <laughs> dun, 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 dun. SVU kind of focused on... The sexual victims still does that show is still running. Yeah, like, it's a fantastic show. Yeah, yeah, it's produced it, really it's, well. Uh, yeah, sex crimes, crimes against women and children is what SVU is. Ah, okay, specifically, huh. special yeah, special victims, victims unit. Not, I guess not it's, sexual it's victims, crime, but yeah. special victims. It's unit. It's crime. Yeah. It's uh, crimes against children and women. Yeah, that's what uh, SVU is. That's interesting. Um, all right, so got a couple little pieces of bonus for you here. You guys all know what an Amber Alert is in the studio. In fact, one yes. of our funniest lines from our old show, The Living Pod, curiously came up with. <laughs> Uh, Amber Alert, oh, uh, long story. Man. Um, but an Amber Alert or a child abduction emergency alert is a message distributed by a child ab- is a message distributed by a child abduction alert system to ask the public for help in finding abducted children. It originated in the United States in 1966. Amber, A M B E R, is a backronym. I'd never known what a backronym was, but yeah. it's, it's a backronym for America's Missing Broadcast Emergency Response. The alert was named after Amber Hagerman, a nine-year-old girl abducted and murdered in Arlington, Texas in 1966. Her mother pushed this whole program to get a better emergency broadcast system for special issues like this. And that's where it came from. It came from her whole situation. That's why Amber Alert exists today. So is that a backronym because they started with the word? Yes. And they started the with her name oh. and filled in the blank. It's cool. just the opposite direction. The backronym. I'm sorry. Not, not at the, all the bonus content. The, the only thing Josh is going to take away from all of these really dark and morbid stories is I know what a backronym is now. <laughs> uh, that's right. He just always learns one little thing. Yeah, I learned about uh, homo erectus and backronyms <laughs> in the last few weeks. <laughs> you know, I just, I just recommended that to my mom because she told me she was fascinated when she found out that there were more than one type of human being on the earth 12,000 years ago. You recommended the show to her? I did, yes. She's going to go listen to that particular episode. She doesn't listen to most of the show. I love my mom, but she doesn't listen to our show. Likewise with my parents. They don't (laughs) listen to... They they haven't listened to anything. I think since back in our original days, they haven't really listened. So, so there was one you didn't have on there. And There's a I, bunch. And I well, know our li- you you were – now. Uh, sorry, I don't mean to stomp all over your words. You're going to be like several of our listeners like, why didn't you cover this story? Why didn't you cover this story? I know that there's no, a lot of them. you can't cover them all. It's fine. These and most are just the, the most ones interesting you, yeah, to the, me. Yeah, most of the ones you covered you, it had pretty damn – I think you started at seven years. Um, we started at or nine no, months, seven with months with Elizabeth, Elizabeth Smart, Smart, but the yeah. next one down is a seven-year yeah. and up. Yeah. Um, Otto Warmbier 
uh, North Korea. I don't, I don't remember that one. Oh man, that one. Oh God. You, if if you wanna you wanna see something really bad, shit, I could have thrown McCain in there too. McCain was a John a McCain, prisoner of yeah. war for what three years in Korea. You should go. Otto Warmbier was uh, I'm pretty sure a college student. He was visiting China. I think he might have been kind of from an affluent family. Um, he was visiting China. Uh, they did a tour into North Korea for, at China, like a tourist tour. Well, he was staying at some hotel and ripped off some kind of like it was oh. like a government poster. Do you remember what I'm talking about? Some yeah. kind of poster for the government. He like ripped it, like stole it or something. Well, they put him in prison and um, he and then sent him back like a few years later as a vegetable. And Damn. then he di- and then he died like right after he got back to the U.S. Um, still don't know why. If it was from abuse, if it was from a suicide attempt, don't know. But the most horrible part about that is you can go watch him. Um, oh, his video pleading. The video is pleading. Yeah, yeah, pleading for He's a his young man. Life. He's like twenty two. Oh yeah, yeah. He was a college kid. Oh, dude, it was so horrible. Such a horrible situation. I and when I heard he was coming back, I was like, oh sweet. They finally got him. They finally got him. No, he came back a vegetable. So no, that was uh, that was bad. I think it happened at, towards the end. Uh, just to give you a time frame, um, it happened towards the end of the Obama administration, and I think I remember he came that. back yeah. like right at the beginning of the Trump administration. It was just a few years, but I can't imagine the the cruelty and horrible. You know what I mean? And uh, and clearly he probably wasn't mentally. Up to something. Who is right? I mean, I don't think of I course, am. Nobody is. But I mean, he probably really didn't live a life that prepared him for what he went through during, however, whatever period of time that was. Um, and we never did know. We never will know. I guess why he went into a vegetative state. Like what happened? It could have was been. he alive when he came back? Just brain yes, dead, or he what? was alive, like brain dead, and died when he came back. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah. He, but he was he was brain dead. He was in a, he came back already in a vegetative state. Like lobotomized. That's why they send him. That's why they sent him back. I guess. I, my guess would be some kind of suicide attempt. That's my guess, but it, again, just a guess. Hmm. Yeah, I, I remember that. That was a heart wrenching video to have to watch. That was a really. Have you seen that video, Josh? Don't yeah, watch. Don't it. watch it. I, just, I wish I had never seen it. It yeah, it don't. still bothers me to this day. Yeah. Yeah, I've watched, you know, more than one. I have watched someone beg for their life on awful footage like that. It will change you. It can change you. You know, if it's, there's any lesson you can learn out of those is uh, don't go to China or Iran. Is that? Well, is that China will no longer take Americans on that tour into North Korea. As uh, like a policy change. Oh, like, so nope, it was North no Korea more. that captured him. It was North. Oh yeah, it was the North oh, Korean sorry. government. Sorry, don't go to Chinese North Korea government. or to. Don't go to North Korea. Period. <laughs> yeah. Under any circumstances, yeah. do not go to North Korea. If there is an <laughs> option other than North Korea, take it. Yes. Yeah. Never go to North Korea yeah, if Bahamas, you're an American, Fiji, regardless. <laughs> you know, South Korea, different story. Yeah. Do not go to North Korea. So, boys. We went dark this week. We went down to the anals of some of the worst pieces of human <laughs> we existence. We did some dark anal, yeah. We did do some dark anal. <laughs> um, so not every story, not every t- Twisted 10 is going to be positive, upbeat, comical, funny. Well, it was, or, it was or, twisted in the fact that it was dark. It was very dark. Yes. Yeah. It was, it isn't, kind of, so it was kind of it's offbeat a for me. twist on the word twisted. <laughs> I've been doing sci- science-y related shows and... You know, That's some right. some fun. I I wanted to take it a different story. This list was inspired by none other than my bride, who absolutely loves true crime stories. Miss Andrea Joy, she's like, here's the list you should do for them. You should do a you know top ten captivity stories. So like, ah, that's right, a good. That's, that's a, great, a good list. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do it. She couldn't do it. She could. She's got too many babies. She's taking care of right now. I, I keep her locked up in the basement raising our seventeen babies <laughs> that we've had. And hmm. no, that's no. Yeah, that's no, not right. That's, that's next not true. next week list. Uh, n- next week's list is inspired by just a little comment, one little sentence that Josh said on his on last week's list. Cool. He said this one sentence that I was like, "Hmm, 
that that makes me wonder about so and so. And of course, I don't want to say it because I don't want to spoil it. What was the sentence? Week, I'm gonna oh, go, I don't want to say it. I need to go back and listen to the, the show now. The sentence is, a, yeah, you'll never figure out what sentence it is. Uh, the sentence is that would be a giveaway if I gave it to would you. Would it be like, a it's gonna have to dead be. giveaway? <laughs> it's gonna be like, <laughs> what it did there. It's about Scooby Doo nice. or something. It's gonna be about cartoons because really? I made <laughs> jokes about it. Totally, totally, you know what? Totally about good. Scooby Doo. We need a cartoon list. We had a Simpsons list in the past, Rocky Soka. Well, we need another one. Oh, yeah. What kind of cartoon list? Like, just top He cartoons. did the top 10 uh, Simpsons. Was it the, it was, the coincidences? It was predictions, yeah. Yeah, the predictions list. Oh, yeah, Which they've you, had some if, awesome if predictions. You're a, <laughs> if you're a Disney Plus subscriber. I am. And you look up the Simpsons, and they have, like, a predictions category. They've lumped in the episodes of the Simpsons that have had things that have become reality. They have the Simpsons on Disney Plus? Yes. I didn't even realize that. Yeah. I didn't either until we got Disney. It doesn't Disney, feel very Disney. Does Disney own Fox now? Yeah. And that's why. Disney that's owns why. everything. Yeah, Disney owns, Disney owns Marvel now, too, well, don't Disney, they? Yeah. Oh, yeah. All the Marvel movies are on Disney+. Plus. Star Wars. Man, and they they're doing And they're doing shows now. They've got, well, the WandaVision, you know about that. Yeah, new and, episode last Friday. I haven't watched it yet. I need and, to watch it. And then um, I guess I got some other stuff going. Loki's got a show coming out. I know, you know, we don't want to start talking about Disney+. Plus. <laughs> this feels more like after-show material. That's it's true. feel like after-show <laughs> material. True. All right, you guys ready to get out of here? Yeah, man. Yeah. All right, let's do it. Um, I'll go have somebody unlock the basement door for you so we can get upstairs. Thank you. Yeah, <laughs> not I a problem. All right. Well, thank you very much for listening to this dark dive for a Twisted 10 topic this week. We appreciate it. Um, thank you to our Patreons, patreon.com slash Twisted 10. If you're interested, that's where you can check out our after shows. Uh, where else do we want to send them, Josh? Uh, well, to our website. Come hang out on our Discord. Um Go to our website, twisted10.com. There'll be a banner at the bottom. It'll pop up says, join Discord. Come hang out. Come chat with us. It's a chat room, basically. Come in there. Come say, hey, tell us what show you listen to. Tell us what you like. Tell us what we fucked up. You know, we just like chatting with you Tell guys. us which list. Give us list ideas. Tell, We're always down for that. That's tell, true, yeah. tell us in Discord which of the, the captive stories I should have put into this list instead of some of the others. Because uh, I know there's a lot. And a lot of people are opinionated on their true crime. So come in and let us know. Let us know your thoughts. And, uh... On the Discord, Sunday nights, about 8.30 Eastern, we kick off, we live stream this show. So to those of you listening on Discord right now, thank you. Um, but yeah, come hang out and catch the show live too. We uh, hang out with the, the Discord a little bit on our breaks and stuff. And after the show, after we shut it down, we'll hang out in there a little bit and then go into the after show. Cool, cool. All right, on behalf of the Twisted 10, I'm Adam. I'm Josh. I'm Ron. Thank you for listening. We'll see you guys next week. Let's go do the after show. 